In this video, we are going to go over the free radical mechanisms. So specifically what we want to do is look at the free radical substitution mechanism that happens for the substitution of alkanes with halogens. So if you remember, our overall reaction here, if we took methane and reacted it with chlorine, and then we had either UV or heat as our catalyst, we would create a chloromethane and we would create HCl as our other major product. This particular mechanism consists of three major steps and that's because we need to produce uh, free radicals and then sort of propagate the reaction along and then stop it at the end. So the first step is called initiation and that involves something called homolytic fission which we'll go over in a moment. That's followed by propagation and finally termination. So writing out the mechanism for this particular reaction requires us to write out all three pieces that are happening in this particular reaction. So let's sort of start out and talk about types of fission that can happen in a molecule. Starting out at the top here, we have a molecule XY if we were to have heterolytic fission, the two electrons that are shared in the bond would go to one of the two ions or the two elements. So it would create, in this case, if it was going both to the X, it would create an X minus ion and a Y plus ion. So that's if both of the shared electrons are going to one of the elements in that bond. In homolytic fission, instead, when we break this bond between X and Y, one of the electrons will go with X and one will go with Y. So we create these species that have one unpaired electron. And these anything that has an unpaired electron is called a free radical. So this is how we generate free radicals. Okay, so what does this have to do with this mechanism? Well, I told you step one involves uh, initiation, which involves homolytic fission. So let's take a closer look at initiation. If we were to take a look at uh, chlorine, a chlorine-chlorine bond, when this bond breaks, we're gonna create two chlorine free radicals. Now, let me just, oh, I can't erase that. I don't know why. Anywho, um, when we create these free radicals, one of the electrons will go on one chlorine and the other electron will go on the other chlorine. So we show electron movement going from the bond to the chlorine and we show it with these half sort of arrows to show that it's only involving one electron. So one electron goes to one chlorine, the other electron goes to the other chlorine, and we generate two chlorine free radicals. This is also where we must include the catalyst because this homolytic fission does not happen unless we have a catalyst present. So once we've generated free radicals, they are super, super energetic and reactive, and then get the rest of the reaction going. So in step two, this involves the propagation. And there are two kind of key reactions that are happening here. The first is a free radical is reacting with the methane um, and is going to create or uh, cause homolytic fission in the methane to generate a methane free radical and HCl as the other product. So one of the hydrogens from methane, if we're drawing it out like this here, you don't have to show this detail, but it's just kind of helpful. Uh, we're, we're breaking sort of that bond there, and then that hydrogen is combining with that chlorine. And then once we've generated this uh, methane free radical, it's going to react with another molecule of chlorine to create our final product plus a chlorine free radical. And if you notice, this chlorine free radical 
is the same as what we've got here. And so this will continuously generate more and more of this reaction because it's actually cyclical. The chlorine free radicals generated in reaction two then react again in reaction one. And then this methane free radical here generated in reaction one causes reaction two to happen again. So that you could think of this as a very sort of cyclical process where these two reactions happen over and over and over again until a termination reaction happens. So termination is step three and termination can happen through one of three possible sort of reactions here. Uh, when we write out the mechanism for this particular reaction, we do write out all three reactions as our termination step. But in reality, only one of these is happening in order to terminate the reaction. So basically, this is a game of chance. And this is either two of the chlorine free radicals are colliding into each other to regenerate a chlorine molecule or a chlorine free radical is colliding with a methane free radical to create uh, one of the products of the reaction, or you could have two chlorine free radicals colliding to create ethane. And so any one of these reactions can stop the particular reaction. So now that we've gone through the steps, Overall, this is our reaction mechanism here. So if you are ever asked to write out the reaction mechanism for a free radical substitution of either methane or ethane with either reacting with bromine or chlorine, then you would write out the initiation step with the reaction showing the half arrows here. Uh, you would write out the two reactions for propagation, the three reactions for termination, as well as your overall reaction for this particular reaction. So that's it for the free radical substitution mechanism. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.